Good morning and thank you for joining me for this morning prayer on Wednesday. In today's reading we meet a man with leprosy, probably the most feared disease at the time of Jesus. Because it didn't just take away parts of your body, it took parts of your soul taking with it your family, your friends, your place in society and your ability to worship. The leper in our story didn't ask Jesus to be healed. Instead, he believes that if Jesus chooses, he can make him clean. Whenever lepers went anywhere, they had to announce their presence by crying out, unclean, unclean. And if you touched a leper or were touched by one, you also were unclean. So what's the difference then between being healed and being made clean? Well, that's really what's at the heart of this story. The leper knows that Jesus can heal him, but what he wants Jesus to do is to restore him spiritually and socially as well. He wants Jesus to make him whole again, to return him to his family, allow him to go back to work and to worship God again in the temple. This leper wasn't just asking not to have leprosy anymore. He wanted to be a whole child of God again. And that's exactly what Jesus does for him. With a touch, his place is re-established within the community, within his family and within the religious life of God's people. My friends, isn't that just what we want today? To be restored to our families, to our friends, our way of life, our work, and our ability to worship as the people of God. So may our prayer be today, Lord, if you are willing, you can make us clean. Lord, restore unto us the joy of our salvation, our ability to be able to hug and kiss those we love, to enjoy the company of our communities and our corporate life of worship together in our sacred spaces. We know that the tide is beginning to change and so let us continue to pray for our NHS and for all of those who are on the front line, those who risk themselves being unclean in order that we may be whole. And may we in faith hear the words of Jesus himself speak to our world saying, I am willing, and thus see a total end to COVID-19. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all of creation, may we rejoice in this day that you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so our psalm this morning is Psalm 30. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favour is for a lifetime. Tears may linger for the night, but joy comes in the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. 
By your favour, O Lord, you have established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. For what profit is there in my death? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear me, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. For you have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders and fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth and his word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his words to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his audiences. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. And so our first reading is taken from the book of Numbers, chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. While they were at Hazaroth, Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had married, for he had indeed married a Cushite woman. And they said, Has the Lord spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very humble, more so than anyone else on the face of the earth. Suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron and Miriam, come out, you three, to the tent of the meeting. And so the three of them came out. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tent, and he called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forward. And he said, Hear my words. When there were prophets among you, I, the Lord, made myself known to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. Not so with my servant Moses. He is entrusted with all of my house. With him I speak face to face clearly not in riddles, and he beholds the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. When the cloud went away from over the tent, Miriam had become leprous, as white as snow, and Aaron turned towards Miriam and saw that she was leprous. Then Aaron said to Moses, O my Lord, do not punish us for a sin that we have so foolishly committed. Do not let her be like one stillborn, whose flesh is half consumed when it comes out of its mother's womb. And Moses cried to the Lord, O Lord, please heal her. But the Lord said to Moses, If her father had but spat in her face, would she not bear her shame for seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp for seven days, and after that, she may be brought in again. So Miriam was shut out of the camp for seven days, and the people did not set on the march until Miriam had been brought in again. After that, the people set out from Hazaroth and camped in the wilderness of Paran. Today's canticle is called A Song of Joy. O be joyful in the Lord all the earth, serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, it is he that made us and we are his, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, 
and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our second reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, beginning at verse 12. Once, when Jesus was in one of the cities, there was a man who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. Then Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him and said, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him, and it ordered him to tell no one. But he said, Go and show yourself to the priest, and, as Moses commanded, make an offering for your cleansing, for a testimony to them. But now more than ever the word about Jesus spread abroad, and many crowds would gather to hear him and to be cured of their diseases. But he would withdraw to a deserted place and pray. One day while he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting nearby, for they had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with him to heal. Just then some men came carrying a paralysed man on a bed. They were trying to bring him in and lay him before Jesus, but finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles into the middle of the crowd. When he saw their faith, Jesus said, Friend, your sins are forgiven you. Then the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, Who is this who is speaking blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their questions, he answered them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which of these is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven you, or stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the one who was paralysed, I say to you, stand up, take up your bed, and go home. Immediately he stood up before them, took what had he had been lying on, and went to his home glorifying God. Amazement seized all of them, and they glorified God and were filled with awe, saying, We have seen strange things today. And so we say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So let us pray. Lord God, we bring before you the sick, and the suffering of our world, all those who are wrestling with illness in body, mind or spirit. We pray for those who are afflicted in their bodies, enduring physical pain, overwhelmed by disabling disease, waiting for an operation or further treatment, and fearful of what the future may hold, or living with the knowledge of a terminal illness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for those who are disturbed or troubled in their minds, those whose confidence has broken down, those unable to cope with the pressures of daily life, 
those oppressed by false terrors of the imagination, those facing the dark despair of depression. We pray, Lord, for those who are afflicted in spirit, those who feel their lives to be empty or whose beliefs are threatened. We pray for those who have lost their faith or those whose hearts have become bitter and twisted and their minds dark. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for those who work to bring help, wholeness and healing to the sick. We pray for our doctors, our nurses, surgeons and medical staff, psychiatrists, counsellors, clergy and therapists. Lord, please support and strengthen all those who share in the work of healing, all those who strive to bring relief and all who minister to the needs of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the joy of being able to wake up, to see the sunshine, to hear the birds sing, and to know that this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Father, we pray that throughout the rest of this day, we may know your presence, your comfort and your healing. Lord, we thank you for the reminder of that story, that Lord, you are willing and that you say to us, my child, be clean, be whole, be restored. And Lord, that's exactly what we want for ourselves, for our families, our friends, our communities, and indeed the wider world. And so Lord Jesus, knowing that you are the same yesterday, today and forever, please stretch forth your hand to bring healing to those we know to be unwell. Lord, in your compassion and your graciousness, Give those who need it, Lord, the knowledge and the revelation they need in order to wipe out this COVID-19 virus. Have mercy on your people, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we give you thanks for your church in this place. We thank you, Lord, for the Diocese of Southwark, for our bishops, Christopher and Jonathan. We pray, Lord, for clergy, for all those, Lord, who are ministering to the needs of others, be it through the telephone. We pray for those, Lord, who are doing shopping. We pray for those who are standing on uh, gates and doorways, just talking to their neighbours, inspiring the Lord, giving them courage and giving them hope. time of quietness, Lord, we name before you those we know who need a touch of your grace at this time.
Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And so as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I'd like to end our time together this morning by reading another portion um, from Jesus Calling. Seek my face, and you will find all that you have longed for. The deepest yearnings of your heart are for intimacy with me. I know because I designed you to desire me. Don't feel guilty about taking time to be still in my presence for you are simply responding to the tugs of divinity within you. I have made you in my image, and I hid heaven in your heart. Your yearning for me is a form of homesickness, longing for your true home in heaven. Do not be afraid to be different from other people. The path I have called you to travel is exquisitely right for you. The more closely you follow my leading, the more fully I can develop your gifts. To follow me wholeheartedly, you must relinquish your desire to please other people. However, your closeness to me will bless others by enabling you to shine brightly in this dark world. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>